Hi, I'm Gabe. This is Jonathan. We're going to see Sinister. I'm really not looking forward to a whole lot. The horror movies that have been coming out lately have just kind of fallen flat for me. The one thing I'm really looking forward to is uh, Ethan Hawke. I really like him. Yeah. You know, for a while I just kind of thought he was pretty mediocre until I saw him in Training Day. That's what really yeah. changed my opinion about him. <laughs> Let us gush about Training Day again. I know, I know the second time in a row. <laughs> But yeah, so, you know, I'm excited to see him, but there's just kind of this whole slew of big actors getting on board with horror movies that just turn out really bad, like Hide and Seek with Robert De Niro. Yeah. Just horrible, yeah. horrible. Movies. Yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. So, I'm, I'm a little nervous about this movie just because of the track record for horror movies lately. Yeah, I hear you there. Horror movies have been really hit and miss over the last few years for sure. I'm simultaneously excited and terrified by the way they're billing this movie. They're billing it as being from the producers of Paranormal Activity and Sinister. That could be a ringing endorsement or a horrible condemnation of this movie, and I honestly cannot tell which it is. Because it could be that these producers are just uber scouts who find great talent, or it could be that the director's track record is so bad they had to bring the producers into it. Yeah, and I think you mean uh, Insidious, not Sinister. Oh, dear. Sinister oh. song we're going to see. Oh, this is what happens when I don't get enough <laughs> sleep at night. No coffee <laughs> man strikes again. I really didn't like Insidious. Really? I loved In Cities. The only thing I didn't like about it was the uh, the CGI-ness. And this is something I talked about in my uh, blog review yesterday, is CGI in ghost movies tends to just really make them suck. And that's what I like so much about the movie I was reviewing that day. But that's one thing I really didn't like about Insidious. And the thing that makes me nervous about this one, if you can tell that they use CGI, they did it badly. Yeah, exactly. It should be completely undetectable. These guys' track record... Eh, not so good. But if they use a lot of practical effects, that could be great. Because I love practical effects in a ghost yeah. movie. And I really love ghost movies. Well, and I'd like to see, like, Michelle Gondry, like, direct a movie like this. You know, someone who would just use their resources to make yeah, that know, all, would, those, all the scenes that would be CGI. But. That would be incredible, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. Yeah, probably not. Bottom line, I'm keeping an open mind. I am not very excited, but I'm willing to give it a chance. All right. Yeah. Let's, Let's do goes. this. All right. Well, this movie kind of failed in the places I suspected it would. Yeah. And it succeeded in the places I hoped it would. Yeah. There was some genuinely creepy parts in there. I, I jumped a couple times. Oh, I jumped quite a few times. Yeah. The movie's really rock solid right up until just after D'Onofrio appears, and then the ghosts start to appear, and yeah. that's where they move straight into show-too-much territory. Yeah, exactly. They leave almost nothing to the imagination. Dude. But only after that point. Up until that point, it's great. Yeah. I absolutely despised the guy who played Officer So-and-So. I feel like... <laughs> I feel like he made Ethan Hawke act badly whenever they were acting together. Like, he was just such a bad actor that it just sucked all the good acting out of all those scenes. He bugged me the entire movie. He wasn't in the entire movie, for the record. Yeah. He was only yeah. in it for about five minutes. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but he keeps popping up. Yeah, he 30, does. 40 second bits. Yeah. Almost none of the conversation in this movie felt natural to me. I just was constantly getting sucked out of what was going on because it all, it feels very scripted. I will agree with you that the characterization through dialogue is clearly not the writer's strength. But the director, who was also the co-writer, clearly has a great ability to tell a scary story and to create mood and to set up a scene in a very scary way but yeah I agree with you on that on the the dialogue feeling overwritten yeah a little forced I didn't feel that it was that way throughout but I felt that there were definitely some sections where I was going okay come on 
<laughs> Come on. Like, it just got ridiculous after a certain point. But, I Particularly, mean, the major argument that they have yeah. was just way overridden. Yeah, seriously. And that's like, I mean, I agree with you on the directing, but the writing was just bad. I liked the use of the D'Onofrio character and the, the way they brought him in. I thought was very good. It, it felt very natural. So I don't think the plotting was bad. I just agree with you that I, the dialogue was was the real weakness there. Yeah. The scenes were well constructed. A perfect example, the opening scene of the movie, the opening shot of the movie. My thought was when I watched it, my God, if the rest of the movie is like that, this is going to be an incredible movie. Because the opening shot is so dark and so haunting. There's just this looming doom. I mean, once you, once you see it, you'll know exactly what I mean. It's just the grimmest damn thing you've ever seen. Totally dialogue free. They don't say a word. And it is creepy. Yeah, quite disturbing, actually. And you feel like that's going to set the tone for the, for the whole movie, that opening scene. And a lot of the tone didn't follow with that setup. I don't know, just parts of it felt so ridiculous and they felt flat. It takes you out of the illusion. Like a scary movie, you should be involved the entire time, which is what makes a lot of them scary. I got pulled out of that movie just so often, too often, for me to, to really like it. I don't agree with you there. As I said before, after the ghosts make an appearance, their scenes really did pull me out of the movie. But aside from that, I would only say there were maybe one or two scenes that I felt were really overwritten. They were significant scenes. But aside from those, I felt like they did a very good job of keeping me involved in the movie. I was really engaged, and I actually found myself getting really pissed off because in the back of the theater we were in, there was... I don't know if it was a girl or a guy who seemed to not be able to stop giggling during tense scenes, which yeah. really irritated the hell out of me oh, yeah, because yeah. I was really getting into the scenes. So I don't agree with you that I was getting pulled out a lot until the ghosts appeared. Well, and that's like the main focal point of the movie. That's when you really don't want to get taken out of the movie. No, I agree. And the ending you really saw coming a mile off. It, um, it halfway through the movie when he was talking to the well, officer. Well, Make sure you don't reveal it. Yeah, anything, yeah so. but halfway through the movie, when they have that conversation about what might be going on, it, it immediately clicked in my head what was going on. The problem is, I can see how it wouldn't be obvious to the characters. We have already accepted that we're in a supernatural story. They haven't. That's what a director has to deal with. The director has to say, okay, clearly the characters aren't going to be able to see this coming, but how can I set it up? So that someone who has already accepted that this is a supernatural story, this is a ghost story, how can I set this up so that it's going to be scary and that they're not going to see it coming? Andy, really. But the whole the whole end of the movie is just that whole overshowing thing. It's sex on the first date, you know? They seriously could have cut the movie off two full minutes before the final shot. Yeah. And it would have been ten times better. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that irritated the hell out of me. But I, you know... But I felt the director did a good job overall in keeping me engaged. First half or so of the movie, he did a really good job building up the mystery and getting you really intrigued with what's really going on. It's just, like you said, when he finally reveals what's going on is when it got really convoluted. It was too much, like just giving away too much, like pandering to people who, you know, like middle school kids and the high school kids who want to go see a horror movie. Like, yeah. I think this would be a good movie to take a date to or something. You know, it's a jumpy movie. It's yeah, and if you want to watch a movie, like my son likes scary movies, my daughter likes scary movies and stuff. If you don't have a problem letting your 13 and 14 year olds watch scary movies, this is a great movie to watch with them because yeah. it's genuinely scary and it's not super graphic. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I agree with you there. Dare we say Sinister is a family movie? <laughs> wow. I kind of want to say that that's a really screwed up family, but that's kind of my family. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I'll probably end up watching this with my son yeah. at some point. Yeah, I can see that. I'm going to give this movie a 7, which uh. is probably a little high, for, especially for me. Coming from me, I, I know I can tell you're shocked. <laughs> yeah, but quite shocked. I'm probably giving it a higher rating than it deserves because its strengths were such that had they carried throughout the entire movie, I would have given it a 10. Uh, I am going... I think I'm going 5 for this one. Mm. I see, you know, I got this scale set up of, like, good versus bad, and I see very evenly, like, just as much bad as good, I'd say. 
Yeah, see, I don't agree. And, I don't agree with you on that. Yeah, there was too much that took me out of it, and guessing the ending in the middle of a movie pisses me off more than just about anything. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going with a five for this one. Thanks for riding along with us. We appreciate it. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons to show your support. Uh, click on the annotations bar down below to go to our channel where you can watch all of our other videos. Check out our blog where we're doing 31 Days of Fright. That's a new movie review every single day during October. All horror. Check out our Facebook where you can like us, show a little more support there. And check us out on Twitter, at Road to the Movies. All the links are in the description. And we'll see you next time. And don't forget to uh, leave questions in the comments section and yeah. suggestions for movies. We're more than happy to watch what you guys want to see. So. Definitely. So we'll see you next time. Thanks.